is happening, Magnesites? Man, I didn't get notified about this either. And I got my bell on. This is ridiculous. Well, are you ready to laugh? I am. Now, for those of you that don't know about me and my history with Willow, I never got a chance to see it as a kid, and it's something I always wanted to see. I got to see bits and pieces of it, you know what I mean, here and there, but I never got a chance to see the whole thing when I was a kid. So when I found out they were going to put out this series and everything, I was like, yo, I got to go back. I got to watch it and get ready for it. Then all of a sudden, I missed the release date. Didn't know it, unbeknownst to me. I started seeing all these titles to videos popping up in my feed about how horrible it was and how woke it was. And I was like, oh, no. Well, I'm glad the drinker watched it for me. Let's see what he has to say. Truly, the good Lord giveth and he taketh away. <laughs> no sooner has Andor come out and raised the tantalizing possibility that Lucasfilm are actually still capable of making decent stuff when the right creatives are involved, than they go ahead and release Willow and it's pretty much business as usual again. A lot of people like Andor, it was just okay. It's tough to a show man. that manages to condense so many of the tired, predictable tropes of modern writing into one project. From the gratingly awful, cringe-inducing dialogue to the smug, insufferable characters, the laundry list of diversity and inclusion tick boxes taking the place of actual personalities, the thinly veiled contempt for the source material, and the brain-destroying attempts at snarky comedy, Willow is basically the congealed, filth-encrusted manifestation of every single thing wrong with modern entertainment. Just realize that's and flash. Like people were even crying out for a TV sequel to a goofy 1980s fantasy movie about dwarves and talking goats that was at best a marginal box office success despite being critically panned. I mean I guess this is what happens when you've annihilated basically every other legacy property you're inherited from the far more talented minds that built your studio in the first place. Eventually you're gonna have to scrape the bottom of the barrel. And so here we find Comer ourselves there, right? staring into the diarrhea splattered toilet bowl of modern entertainment for the last time in 2022, once again questioning the terrible life Life choices that led us here. Anyway, let's get this shit over with so I can go and suffer through Avatar 2 instead. You won't. I think you'll like it, baby. So story, I don't know. <laughs> Call it that, picks up about 20 years after the events of the movie. Following the defeat of Bav Morda, <laughs> yeah, that's the name, all right, her daughter Sorsha has become queen and married Mad Mardigan, who's suspiciously absent from the show because I guess having a strong, heroic male character mm. is to Lucasfilm what giving real, honest opinions of Disney movies is to Kevin Smith. Keep on crying, Kev. Maybe one day you'll get that directing gig that you traded in your balls for. <laughs> anyway, they had two kids before Mad Mardigan vanished. One is a skinny, effeminate womanizer, but he vanishes in the first episode, so we won't worry about him for now. Mm. The more important character here is obviously his sister, Kit. What would you like to hear? What the hell was that? No, not that kid. <laughs> Although considering how little sense this show makes, I wouldn't be entirely surprised if a talking car from the 1980s suddenly burst Shut onto up. the set and started fighting people. Kit is whatever passes for a main character in Willow. I know, right? Imagine a Lucasfilm sequel to a legacy IP that crowbars another generically strong female character into the main role. And so from this point onward, we're gonna call her exactly what she is. Strong female character. <laughs> so strong female character fancy herself as an adventurer and a warrior and she spends most of her days sparring and swapping long admiring glances at ginger plank of woods and don't worry we're going to talk more about her later believe that ginger anyway in case woods. you missed the not so subtle hints that the show hammers you over the head with in literally the first five minutes strong female character and ginger plank of wood are super gay for each other because this show has to reflect the world we live in <laughs> anyway whatever the point is that strong female character is angry because Ginger Plank of Wood oh. is planning to leave and start training to become a knight. Are you trying to say her <laughs> acting is wooden? <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah, okay. And so this drives a rift between the two characters. Complicating things even further is the fact that strong female character is due to be married to the son of an important nobleman to help cement the future of their kingdom. Place your bets now, ladies and gentlemen. Do you think this guy will turn out to be strong, capable, assertive, and masculine? 
or a weak, cowardly, timid-looking beta male that uses safety scissors to open his bags of crisps. <laughs> you know, it's weird, but I feel like I can almost smell the writer's room for this show. So strong female characters busy humiliating him and safety generally acting like a total asshole on their wedding night. That's but funny. oh no, then the castle comes under attack by some monster things called the Gales. And her idiot brother gets kidnapped in the fighting. Oh no, what a terrible loss, I really liked him. But clearly something <laughs> must be done. Do you think the Queen will send the full might of her military to crush the threat and get her son back? Or will she send her only remaining child along with a bunch of random arseholes that are completely ill-equipped for a mission like this? I'll give you one guess. <laughs> so strong female character, ginger plank of wood, and a group of talentless diversity hires head out to defeat the bad guys, rescue the helpless prince, and save the day. Yeah, I see what you did there, Lucasfilm. How very progressive of you. <laughs> oh yeah, and they're also accompanied by a young serving girl who seems suspiciously outspoken and confident for someone of such low standing. I wonder if she might turn out to be far more important than she seems. <laughs> you are Elora Dallon, last god of Chimeria, future empress, high priestess, sent from sources of the Nine Realms, and the world's last, best hope against the evil coming to destroy us all. Thank you, Warwick Davis. <laughs> so the serving girl is actually Elora Dallon. The baby from the first movie that's quite literally the girl who's the key to everything. Mm. I mean, I'm pretty sure she had red hair in that film, but whatever. I guess having two redheads in one production might create some kind of ginger singularity that could destroy the entire universe. <laughs> so yeah, once again, she becomes their only hope of destroying the bad guys and saving the world. How? Why? Don't know. She's magic or something, and that's as much as we're supposed to think about it. Oh yeah, and Willow finally shows up after about an hour of screen time in a show which is literally called Willow. Willow. I was just about to ask him, where's Willow at earlier? I was like, where's Willow? Where's Willow? This utter disaster of a show when basically every single aspect of it makes me want to gouge my eyes out like I just had a two-week self-catering holiday on the event Horizon. I mean, I guess the thing that immediately leapt out at me about Willow was the dialogue, in that it makes Rings of Power seem like fucking Dostoevsky. Pretty much oh, every boy. single character talks and acts like they just walked off the street in downtown LA. The script is filled with dialogue, <laughs> jokes and expressions that came straight out of 2022, and it's more jarring than taking a Ferrari up to 100 miles an hour and throwing it into reverse. Yeah. Attempts to work in the kind of snarky humour you normally see in the MCU are almost physically painful to watch. God, I hate Marvel. I hate what it's done to cinema. Now, I know the original movie wasn't exactly Lord of the Rings in terms of its emotional tone, but it at least knew when to ease off the humour and work in some actual serious moments to make us feel like something was at stake. But here, it even gets in the way of actual exposition that would be genuinely useful for world building, and it feels more like the show is trying to act like some cool, self-aware comedian, ironically mocking his own persona. I mean, when a show literally takes the piss out of itself, it leaves me wondering what the hell I'm supposed to do. The script's also filled with absolutely nonsensical decisions and contrived events. Vitally important characters are allowed to wander alone and unguarded in hostile territory because everyone just kind of forgot about them. And when they get kidnapped, the rest of the group take off in pursuit with a heavy, overburdened wagon that needs constant repair and gets bogged down in rough terrain because nothing says urgent, high-stakes pursuit like a nice leisurely jaunt on a fucking horse and car. <laughs> <laughs> the group splits up for no particular reason at one point, further dividing their limited resources, only to conveniently reunite at exactly the correct moment so that the rest of the plot can happen. The acting, on the other hand, is so bad that it makes Tommy Wiseau look like Paul Newman. Oh, no. <laughs> the only two actors in Willow who have a of talent and actually seem to be taking their job seriously get killed off within the first few episodes, and honestly, if Finchie from the fucking office turns out to be the best thing in your show, then you know you've got problems. <laughs> what the book? No, I'm not. No. And truly, one of the biggest offenders here has got to be Ginger Plank of Woods. Seriously, I've got no idea why Disney has got such a hard-on for this actress, but they've cast her in everything from Star Wars yeah. to Marvel to Willow, and she's been absolutely okay. terrible in all of them. She stumbles through every scene with the exact same look of blank, wide-eyed confusion no matter what the context or situation, and she has all the charisma and screen presence of a cardboard cutout of Brie Larson. Seriously, Disney, stop trying to make this girl happen. She's not going to happen. Willow also led me to another unfortunate conclusion. 
Warwick Davis can't fucking act anymore. I mean, he seems like a really cool guy in real life, and he's obviously had a great career, but one thing he's not now is a good actor. He delivers most of his lines like he literally just walked onto set and started reading them off a teleprompter for the first time. There's no inflection, really? no emotion, no sense that he's trying to convey anything about the character at all. Oh, I'm just like everyone else. But you're not. There's something very special I mean, you'd think he would have been excited to reprise one of his biggest ever roles, but hey, maybe he'd actually read the script and realised what kind of shit he'd signed up for. <laughs> Not that it matters all that much, since he's basically lost in a sea of other characters with nothing to do except complain about how he's getting old and can't do magic anymore, and I get the distinct impression that the show doesn't really want him there anyway. He's like that weird creepy uncle that gets invited over once a year at Christmas out of sheer obligation, and your parents have to make awkward small talk with him for an hour or two before sending him on his way. Yeah. Yes, don't worry, Frank, I'm sure the court case will go fantastically. Of course you were wrongly accused. We don't believe a single word of it. <laughs> <laughs> Just like most other Lucasfilm productions, legacy characters like Willow only really exist to pave the way for a new generation of smarter, better, and more awesomer young people that were written especially for modern audiences. <laughs> you know how I often joke about how writers these days have lost the ability to actually write likeable, relatable, and complex female characters, confusing strength and resilience with obnoxious arrogance and grandiose self-absorption? Well, strong female character is basically all of those gripes personified into one person. I don't know what they were thinking when they wrote this arrogant, self-absorbed moron, but I genuinely can't think of anyone I've disliked as quickly or as intensely as Princess Kit. She is simply awful whenever she's on screen, existing only to put down, humiliate, and steal attention away from everyone else around her, and it's all compounded mm. by a smug, conceited performance from an actress that seems to think she's in a completely different show. But drink her, you multifaceted maestro of macho masculinity, I hear you say. Princess Kit is meant to be a flawed character that has to learn and mature throughout the story. She's not meant to be perfect right off the bat, because perfect characters are boring. That's absolutely true, hypothetical straw man, but even the most flawed of protagonists <laughs> needs to have at least some redeeming features to get you invested in them. Han Solo, Tony Stark, and shit, even Mad Mardigan from the original Willow were all flawed characters that had a lot of room for personal growth, but they each had enough innate charm, likability, and charisma that you actually wanted them to become better. <coughs> the only thing I wanted Princess Kit to do was stick her head in a fucking food blender. <laughs> the relationship between her and Ginger Plank of Wood is supposed to form the backbone of the show's narrative, but honestly, I couldn't care less if they ended up together because why should I? They're a pair of insufferable idiots played by terrible actresses, and their romance has all the depth of that puddle of stale piss on my kitchen floor. All of these horrific elements combine together to form what has to be one of the most painful, miserable, vomit-inducing viewing experiences I've had all year. And believe me, that's up against some pretty stiff competition. As hard as this might be to believe, <laughs> Willow might actually be worse than Rings of Power and even She-Hulk. <laughs> Serious? In short, Willow is quite simply an insult. <laughs> an insult to the source material, an insult to the fans, an insult to human intelligence, wow. and an insult to the very concept of filmmaking. I managed to slog through four episodes before deciding, fuck it, this just isn't worth it anymore. <laughs> and if it's not worth it, the then I'm pretty off. sure it's not worth yours either. <laughs> anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now! <laughs> Thank you, Drinker, for doing the due diligence for me, because after I started to see all those videos, I, I didn't see any videos saying it was great, uh, popping up saying like, hey, this is great, you gotta watch, I just kept seeing the slew of stuff, talking about it, that it just sucked, so thank you for doing what you had to do to warn us all. I will not be watching it, but I think I will go back and still watch the old movie. Hopefully that doesn't tickle my fancy to check out the series. <laughs> I don't do woke. Oh, by the way, whenever you see me do a movie review, if I forget to tell you that it's, whether it's woke or not, if I forget to tell you, that means it's not. Because if I do tell you, 
You know, like, I, I make it a point to tell you. If I forget to tell you whether it is or isn't, assume that it's not woke. Because you wanted to know that about Avatar. I can't wait to see what he thinks about Avatar. It could go either way for him, I think. I think it could go either way for him, you know. I mean, it's a simple story, just like the last one was, so that could be boring to him. Uh, the abundance of blue could irritate the drinker, maybe. It's too much blue in him. <laughs> He'll probably give it its props for tech. It, you know, the technical marvel of a film that it is, but I don't know if he'll like it or not. So we shall see. Either way, I'm going to have a good time watching this review. Get over there and subscribe to him, Tyrone Magnus sent you. If you enjoyed my reaction to his thoughts on this series, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and share. 10 million subscribers. Woo!